and we had about uh, close to 2,500 people following us on Facebook, but I guess I start getting on seeing so much until it got uncomfortable. And uh, they got me off. But you know, uh, I was able to get uh, on YouTube and uh, there's about 200 of my messages that they are. Glad y'all made it safe. About 200 of our messages. And we're going to have to, I guess, I guess it's okay. I was just going to say we're going to have to uh, shift half on this side. <laughs> but I guess y'all okay being over here by yourself, aren't you? With all this COVID and stuff. Huh? Y'all all right? <laughs> and COVID did not come in here. But it's still out there, ain't it? A demon. And uh, right now everybody is seem to be, the Bible says when they relax and say peace and safety, then what happens? Sudden destruction. Yes, sir. And right now, people are saying, we can get a breather. Peace and safety. But it won't last long. Right now, we got so much happening. I'm not going into all these world events. But there's so much happening in the world right now. Until um, these are the last days. These are those days that when people say uh, peace and safety, it's going to be one thing after another. And that's the way it is. One thing after another, isn't it? And we just, God has just given us a little breather. Chance to catch our breath. But it's coming back in a bigger way. So please stay prayerful and keep your spiritual life up to date. Keep your spiritual life up to date. Don't you, if you have your Bibles, y'all miss y'all supposed to have been coming here and saying it and helping us out. But I'm glad y'all made it safe. Is Brother Courtney here? He didn't get a chance to make it. Well, anyway, I'm glad y'all made it. Grandmama been waiting on y'all. She's been looking at that door waiting on y'all. I know she glad y'all showed up. Okay. That's right. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with us. Turn with us to the book of Matthew chapter Book of Matthew, chapter 5, I believe. And uh, start at verse 14. What is that? Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Back there, behind your sister Alberta. Who was that? Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. It's good to see you. And those beautiful little daughters you brought with you. And Alana. Hi, Alana. That's right your man. Amen. But anyway, I'm sorry. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. A city that is set on a hill. Cannot be hid. We are the light of the world. The world is in darkness right now. Haven't y'all read that in the Bible? I was preaching on that last, yesterday morning. I was preaching on that, that we are the children of the light. We're not the children of the crackheads. We're not the children of uh, drugs. We're not the children of uh, meth. We're not the children of alcoholism. We're not the children of the LGBTQ. We're not the children of darkness. The children, look at all these kids out there that are killing other kids. Y'all heard what they saw this little 12 year old boy on the run. I don't know if they found him or not, but how these three boys 
you know, um, with these three girls, and they found these three girls, one on one street, and, and they went down the street and found, and they, she was dead, they shot her to death, and found another one right down the street, not far from her, and found the third one. Found out, and these three girls, just teenagers, and found out they were shot to death by these three boys. And the youngest of these three boys was 12 years old. And he's still on the run. Okay. You know, God warned us years ago, prophesied, and said, all these precious little ones you got, you're going to find out this is going to be a demonic generation. You find out the devil is going to, and they're not going to have no conscience, and they're going to be hired to take and to, and to murder people and to kill people because they know that the laws are going to be in their favor. They know they're going to be put in jail one day and then the law is going to be so weak, they're going to get them right back out. And that's what's happening. And God said, you know, God really telling us about these cities, how bad they was going to become. In the book of Revelation, it speaks about the cities become the, a hold of every foul and unclean and hateful spirit. Didn't he? And in Revelation, he said, come out of her, my people. Come out of these places. And look at how they are uh, migrate. They used to do everything they can going into um, California and going into all these cities. But now they are fleeing California by the masses. They're fleeing Chicago. So much murder. They're fleeing out of New York. They're fleeing out of Washington State over here. And a lot of these big cities that are controlled by, um, I'm not going to say the name of the um, party, but it's a socialist. They're not, they're not the old party like they used to be, not the old Democrats. I ain't going to say the name of them, but they are socialists now, communists now. Well, I'm not going to go there, but it's a fact. I'm just addressing the facts. These cities that are controlled by these liberals, socialist people, they are the cities that people are, are fleeing from because there's so much violence in them, so much evil in them now. And this is now, see now why God told us many, many years ago, y'all weren't even born, a lot of y'all weren't even born, but God told us many, many years ago, cities was going to become uh, demon-possessed. And uh, they were going, not going to be safe to live in them. And people wonder, what are you doing way out there in the country? With them cows out there. Well, the cows, they don't, they don't carry automatic weapons in churches and murder little bitty nine-year-old kids. Y'all, I mean, y'all read about it? How they got this transgender, how she went inside of a church and blow the building apart with this automatic power, powerful automatic weapon, killing these nine-year-old little kids. See, all of this was spoken. And people call us Jim Jones, all the cults, because we wanted to live in the country. And God told us to grow our own food. And um and now people, you look back and you see why. I remember we had a big tent up on Apache. I mean over there on a Lewis. Over there on Lewis. And for 10 days, the man of God prophesied so hard until, you know, bowels burst inside. Prophesied so hard. And different ones was asking, why can't Brother on that now? Why can't Brother Turtle on God? Well, he was out here for 50 years. Prophesying, warning, and, and, and all this until that word was so severe. And that word inside of him was so strong and so severe. Now, all of that's coming to pass. All of that's coming to pass. Made hands on so many people. Until the, you know, hand just, until the hand just, Start shaking because 
laid hands on so many people. M millions of people. Jesus. And now that word that he spoke is coming to pass. Amen. But I'll tell you one thing. God also said there's going to be a revival. Amen. God also said he was going to save a bunch of people. And, there was, and, and he was going to restore the gifts and restore his power and, and raise up a new crop that was not going to compromise. They were going to stand up like a giant in his last days. Brother Hunter was said on this rock and, and this new crop is going to be up on a rock and that rock is Jesus and nothing is going to shake them. Nothing is going to cause them to deviate. And they're not going to turn their pulpits over to these queers, to these um, genders, to these homosexuals, to these lesbians, to all that. They're going to stand and the gospel is going to be preached. Brother uh, Gibble was telling me about how that in New York City, who's coming down here, he's telling Brother Blue, he said in New York City, you, you have to have a license to be able to preach. And if you don't preach what they want you to preach, if, if, if you don't consent to preaching that two men can marry or that two women can marry, you're not going to get a license. See, that's where we're at. Solomon and Gamal, homosexual. And God warned us all of this was coming. Well, they just, I'm not going to stop preaching. But I'm not going to consent to all of this I'm not going to hell for nobody and with nobody. Amen. And don't you either go to hell with them. Amen. See, we are a city set up on a hill, a light. You ever uh, at night going into a city and you can see it 30 miles away? You know, I used to live, and I was raised 30 miles from Dallas, Texas. And I could get on top of a building. And, and I could see the bright lights of Dallas, you know, at night, 30 miles away. Well, people are supposed to be seeing us 30 miles away. They're supposed to be able to know. We're supposed to have such a light beaming out of us until they can sense and they can tell there's something different about us. Something about us that we stand out. Not that we're stuck up, not that we're better, but they can tell that we don't have that spirit that's controlling the world. That spirit that's controlling this evil generation today. Amen. And God said, God don't want us being like them. He wants us to stand out and be different. Not to be stuck up and be proud and self-righteous. But to stand out and to show them the way out of darkness. To show them the way out of this perversion, out of all of this film. He said, we, the world, or Isaiah chapter 60 says, darkness would cover the earth. And that's what's happening. And gross darkness to people. And that's exactly what's happening. A gross darkness is on the people. Uh, that means people's minds has become taken over by darkness. Their thoughts is taken over. Their hearts is full of darkness. Their actions, their ways, their deeds, their words, their conversation, places that they go is, is full of darkness. That's right. And God said all of this was going to come, but he said you ought to stand out and be a light. You ought to stand out and be an example. You ought to be a, a lighthouse. When they are needing help, when they want to change their lives, when they want to come out of bondage and come out from under the captivity of addictions and all of this other stuff, we are, that's right, the, the darkness has got so many people right now until a lot of them are mental. You know, me and Brother Chuck, we was, y'all heard me tell this, how we was on 12 o'clock in the daytime, we were, over there in Comanche, we was walking. That's when we had our church on 36th Street North. And uh, these, there was men that, there was a man that was, he was, he was walking. 
Comanche appointment. And he was, and, and I was looking at him, and uh, he was looking up into. It was daylight, and it was twelve o'clock, and no, no clouds, and he just kept on. He said, "I said, what you doing?" He said, "Y'all don't see him up there." And another woman passed by. She said, "Yeah, they follow me everywhere I go." In other words, a lot of people that are mentally unstable. Right, right. That's like they used to have places like in Benita for people like this, but 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 they don't have places. They just let them, you know. Ain't gonna tell the hundred and cross them borders just like that. Unstable, killing, no conscience, no feeling, no discernment from what's right and what's wrong. And they're out there, and our cities are full of them. But God said, you are supposed to be a light in the midst of this darkness, in the midst of this crime and filth. We ought to bring to them a message of deliverance, a message of peace, a message of hope. The only peace you have is going to be in Jesus. I mean, people don't find peace out there drinking. They don't find peace at these casinos. They don't find peace at all these worldly places out there. Do they? The wicked is like a troubled sea. You ever see the, how the, the waves of the sea just back and forth, tossed back and forth. That's where the wicked, back and forth, back and forth, in sin, back and forth, in drugs, back and forth, in all these things. See, they'll, they'll never find any peace. And we are a light to them. We are to bring to them the Prince of Peace. We are to bring to them the only hope there is, is for Christ to be in us living, radiating, shining out of us, bringing, delivering, showing the world there is hope, there is a way out. That's where you're supposed to be. See, y'all look at that light. Can't want to look into it, can you? Well, that's the way your life is supposed to be. That's the way your testimony is supposed to be. So, so bright until people can't ignore it. Until they follow you. Many is going to look for somebody to bring them out of this darkness, out of this hate, out of this drugs, out of this evil that the world is being possessed by. Let's read that again. Matthew 14. Ye are the light of the world. You are the light. Instead of looking for somebody else, don't you know, every day, it's been, it's been said that you have 35 people watching your life every day. Every single day, your life can be an influence. Your testimony can be a light. Your words can Bring people out of darkness. You can show them the way to salvation. Show them the way to help. That's why we're left here. When God saved us, he left us here and left us in this dark world because he wants us to be a, a light to them. Finish reading that. Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the whole world. A city that is set on a hill. A city that is set. Now stop right there and read John or, and read Isaiah chapter 60. Stop right there and read Isaiah chapter 60. Arise. Arise. Shine. Shine. For thy light is come. For thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord. Is risen upon thee. Is risen upon you. For behold, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness shall cover the earth. But before darkness covers the earth, what did he say? Rise, shine, for thy light is come. I'm putting something in you to counteract the darkness. I'm putting something in you. When darkness takes over the world, you're going to have something in you that's going to show the world their way out. Finish reading that Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise. Rise. Shine. Shine. For thy light is come. For thy light is come. 
And the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Is risen upon thee. That's the Holy Ghost. The glory of God. The radiation. The power. The spirit. The presence. The might of God. Risen upon you. While the darkness is rising. While demon spirits is taking over people's minds and bodies. And taking over the world. God said something totally different is going to take you over and going to cause you to rise up in the midst of this darkness. Rise up in the midst of this sickness. Rise up in the midst of these COVID and all these pandemics and all these things that's coming. You're going to be the answer. You're going to be the light. You're going to show them their way out of all of this that's taken over this generation. We are the hope. Christ in us is the hope for this generation being, being spared or surviving. So get the word in you. Get prayer in you. Get close to God so you can be a light to this generation. Finish reading that. For behold, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. The darkness shall cover the earth and that is what's happened. That is exactly what has happened. Darkness has covered this earth. Uh huh. And gross darkness to people. Gross darkness to people. But the Lord. And I told you what that gross darkness is. It's when your mind is so darkened. And your heart is so darkened. And your spirit is so darkened. Until you can't discern right from wrong. Until your conscience is seared. Until nothing moves you. Nothing bothers you. You know, people can lie and don't feel bad about it. They can steal and don't feel bad about it. They can curse and they can go out and blow somebody's brains out and, and don't feel bad about it. That's gross darkness. That's gross darkness. When get, people get so bad until they're not safe to live in society, you have to lock them up. You have to put, you know, they got one of them things they put on them, straight jackets on them. And you got to give them narcotics. And give them something to calm them down from, from having fits and all of this. See, gross darkness. It's not enough just to lock folks up. People need deliverance. They're already locked up in their mind. They're already locked up in their spirit. Y'all remember me telling about how that this, um, in this big old circus, I told y'all about how this elephant was, was, um, Inside of this zoo, and 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 locked down, chained in, in the in the zoo. Where he couldn't, you know how elephants, wild animals, have their own territory, but couldn't get out. And there was one of them that they had bought from the zoo, and he was um, in a circus, and they put these big old shackles on him, uh -huh. and he could he could go just so far. He could travel for about all six feet as far as he could go. And then that chain would get him and, and stop him. And, and, and one day they took him and they put him out of the circus and put him back into the zoo. And he had freedom to roam in this um, zoo or this place. It might have been a safari or that they put him in. Well, so, you know, like they got in Africa, these safaris. It might have been there, but he would he would go out on that open space, but he'd go so far. And they said, well, no, he ain't got nothing bad in it. He ain't got nothing to stop him. See, his, he'd been bound so long until now his mind is bound. Jesus. Mentally, he's shackled. And same thing about a lamb. They done a lamb the same way. He was, you know, in this um, circus, in this, I mean, in this zoo, and they put him in this cage, and he was restless, and he would go so far, and then he'd look outside, and then he'd go right back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, for years, and one day they took him out of the, they took him out of the um, confinement, that I don't even know that six feet of confinement, and they took him out of that cage. And when they took him out of that cage, they opened up the cage for him to go out. They thought he was just going to rush out. But he kept walking and he looked. 
and he kept going. And they were surprised. They found out that he wasn't just bound and shackled in that cage. He was been in there so long, now his mind has become shackled. A lot of people have been in sin so long until they have become shackled. They have become bound. This is a gross darkness. And we're going to have to find out some kind of way to go in there and break through this darkness. And break through this shackle. And break through this captivity. And bring them out from under the, the captivity. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To bring, to preach the gospel to the poor. What does he mean? Well, Paul said in Romans 1 and 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God under salvation. It, the salvation means deliverance. It brings you out of shackles. It brings you out of mental bondage, out of physical bondage, out of spiritual bondage. The gospel is a sharp two-edged sword. It cuts between the mind and the joints. It's a discerner of the thought. It knows the intents of the heart. It can go where psychiatrists cannot go. It can go where surgical tubes cannot go. It can go into the mind, into the heart, into the spirit, into the thought, and it can bring deliverance. He sent his word to deliver you. He sent his word. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the word that God has sent to free people from sin, from demons, from sickness, from mental oppression, from physical sickness, from emotional problems, all of these things. He sent his word. This is the light that God wants to bring to the world. The light that brings deliverance. The light that brings salvation. The light that opens the eyes of the blind. That set the captive free. That open the prison doors. Hallelujah. This is what God wants us to do. Rise and shine. Rise and be a light. Rise and be a testimony. Rise up and be a witness. Rise up and open the prison doors. Rise up and set the captive free. Hallelujah. This is what he meant. Rise and shine. For your light has come. What light? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things was made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. In him was what? Life. life. And the life is what? The life is the light of man. That life that we live is what's going to give light to man. That life that you live, hallelujah, that's going to cause man to come out of bondage, come out of darkness. They're going to see something different about you, something different about the way you have carried yourself in, on the job, in the schools, or wherever in your neighborhood. They're going to notice that life is radiating the very light of God. That life is radiating. In him was life. And the light was the light of man. And the light shined in where? Darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. That was the true light that lights every man that comes into the world. Jesus is the true light. Hallelujah. He's the one that gives you true healing. He said you will know the truth and the truth will make us free. We need to be free in our mind, in our body, in our spirit, in our soul, in our family from this darkness that's taken over the world. Darkness has covered the world. But rise in this light. Rise and shine. My gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power that delivers, that breaks yokes, that opens prison doors, that sets the captain free. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Read that again in Matthew 5. 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on You are the light of the world. That's what Jesus done. That's what Jesus done. When he sent the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Didn't he? He came into the world. Can I read something? Matthew, I believe it's chapter 4. 
Matthew chapter 4, somewhere around 20, 21 or 22 or 23. Read Matthew 4. I'll read a little bit of this. And Jesus went about all Galilee, uh -huh. teaching in their synagogues. Back it up a little bit. They that sat in darkness. They that sat in darkness saw great light. The people which sat in darkness. What verse is that? 16. Yeah, read that. The people that sat in darkness. Look at people sitting in darkness in, a, in Tulsa. Look at people sitting in darkness right now. All over this world. The people that sat in darkness. Uh-huh. Saw a great light. Saw a great light. And to them which sat in the region. And to them that sat in the region. And the shadow of death. And the shadows of death. Light is sprung up. Light is sprung up. Regions. Shadows of death. Given up because of some terminal disease. Given up because of some disease, some sickness, some bondage. Them that sat in the regions and the shadows of death. Uh-huh. Light is sprung up. Light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus... Light is sprung up. From that time, what they're talking about, light is sprung up. What did Jesus say? I am the what? Light of the world. Who sprung up? Jesus sprung up. I know a child is born. And he sprung up. A son is given. And his name shall be called Jesus. The word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And sprung up. Go ahead. From that time Jesus began to preach. From that time Jesus began to preach. And to say. And to say. Repent. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Is at hand. God's rule. God's authority. Uh, there's a new sheriff in town. He gonna drive you devils out. He gonna drive you diseases out. He gonna drive you darkness, you infirmities out. A new sheriff is in town. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. Huh? The kingdom of heaven. In other words, uh, uh, the authority of God has come down where the devil has been ruling, where the devil has been stealing and killing and destroying. The authority of God has now come to town. Go ahead. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee. Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee. Saw two brethren. Saw two brethren. Simon. Simon. Called Peter. Uh huh. And Andrew his brother. Yeah, read them. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. That's what I'm doing. I'm casting a net. This ain't no sea right here. This is a little bitty pond right here. <laughs> I'm casting this. I'm casting a net into this little pond. Try to catch some good fish. Some soul winner. You don't fish. Soul winner. Come on. And he saith unto them. Said to them. Follow me. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. I'm going to make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets. Uh-huh. And followed him. And followed him. And going on thence. Uh-huh. He saw other two brethren. James. So so other two brothers, Go James, ahead. James the son of Zebedee, uh -huh. and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship, yes, and their father, and followed him, yes. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Now there it is. And Jesus went about all Tulsa, all Oklahoma. All, not just Galilee, but this gospel is going to go throughout Tulsa. It's going to go beyond Tulsa, throughout the state of Oklahoma, into the 50 states, beyond the 50 states, and it's going to go all the way. You listening? All the way. Into other nations. Yes. Acts chapter 1 and 18. This he said, Go ye and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. He went everywhere preaching. See, I remember a vision the brother Tell had. He saw um, a light coming. And that light came and he saw it hit into 
he saw it hit all the way into um, the islands. And that was back in 74. And we fought at that light and we had revivals throughout all the islands. Thank you, Lord. And the Caribbeans. And, the, and all those places. And one place we went, 400 blind people. 400, 500, 500 dead and crippled. Over a half a million people got saved in a period of three or four months. And we followed that light and it drove out witchcraft. And we followed it to Trinidad and it drove out a lot of evil. There was a woman in Trinidad. She weighed at least 500 pounds. And we had um, open our meetings. And this woman that was, um, she was a um, fortune teller. And she uh, is one that they would come to to cast spells on people. So she heard about this meeting we had in Trinidad. And she came and sat on the front row. And, you know, I think at the time, I weighed about five pounds more than I weigh now. And here this woman, and Brother Terrell, he didn't weigh a good 98 pounds because he'd been fasting for close to 100 days. And I had to take him and help him get to the platform. He was so weak. But this woman, out there on the front row, and, and he began to preach, and she began to rise up and raise her hands up, stand up. Here I'm a little bit of Matt going out there to control her. <laughs> and I went out there, and the woman just pushed me aside, about six feet. <laughs> you know, three feet up, three feet that way. She's demon possessed. And here brother told that anointing come upon him. And when it did, he jumped off of that platform and jumped over there where that woman was at and drove out those demons. And they come out slimy like snakes. And you could see the ground splatter, but you couldn't see nothing. But you could see the ground splatter from these evil spirits. Ground actually splattered. Amen. And when them things and then things come out of her long, then a long slimy thing, about six feet, come out of her mouth. Jesus. And she screamed. And when it come out, she said, I'm free. When she said that, he laid hands on her. And and pointed the Holy Ghost inside of her. And told her, you've been going around there casting spells upon people. You've been going around here doing all this and doing all of that. He said, now you're going to be a servant of the Lord. These same people that you have, have put plagues and put spells on, you're going to go out there and search them out and bring deliverance to them now. That's when light comes. Light takes the place of darkness. Light drives out evil spirits. And there was another woman that came and into a Tobago in Trinidad and she was um, in charge of that whole island. This woman was a, um, if a missionary would come to town, she would be the first one to go to the meeting and she would challenge any missionary and she'd whoop them and she'd make them leave. And we went to this place and she came. I said, oh God, here come another one. It's showdown time. And this woman came up and she thought she's going to whoop Brother Charlie and whoop all the rest of us and make us leave. But he laid, he, he jumped on that woman, laid his hands on her, and, and told her, told them devils in there, you got, you got to go. You're leaving right now. And the devil spoke out of her and said, I ain't going nowhere. Mm. We're not leaving. That's why I'm talking about chills went all over your body. When the pain spoke out of her, she said, we have been here. We own this island. This is our territory. 
you going to leave. And he said, you better shut your mouth. And that demon started cussing. He said, if you don't quit that cussing, I'm going to take my sock and put it in your mouth. I'm going to, that's like, so he took his sock off, put it in her mouth. <laughs> that's right. He got rough. They got rough with him. And I, would, I, and I and here I am holding her and pleading the blood and, and crying everything I could cry, every, everything I could think of, every scripture, you know, skin shaking on oh, these demons. <laughs> that's right. Things was real. And then the demon, he said, I'm giving you five minutes. I'm going to give you, I'm counting to five, you coming out. And the devil said, I ain't going, we're not going nowhere. We own this. We've whooped every missionary. We, we, we have torn down and we have caused all these places to be taken, all these places of worship. No, no, you're not coming on our territory. This is ours. We own this. Uh, he said, oh, four. We're not leaving. Three. Okay, okay, two. We going, we going. One. And you can hear all them things coming out and went in the atmosphere. But I'll be back. All of them come out. And God Turn that woman's life around. Thank you, Lord. Made a missionary out of her. Called her to be a soul winner. See, that's what that light will do. That's what God needs. Men like this, holy, pure, sincere. That's right. You know, people look at you and they judge you. Because they, people judge you by what's in them. What's in their heart. What's in their eyes. What's in their mind. God said, don't be judging nobody. God got true men and women of God that's real, that's sincere, trying to do right, trying to live right. Why has everybody got to measure up to people's corrupt ways? God got real men and women of God standing for the truth. Don't he? And that's what he's, and, and, and that's why this anointing that was up on Brother Terrell flowed out of him and drove this evil out. Drove this evil out. Yes. And this woman becoming one of them. Great missionary. And he left. And he left the revival. And there was 20,000 people there. And there was another missionary with me. I'm not going to call his name. Because I know this goes on the line. And he'll listen to it. But he probably don't mind. But anyway. This missionary. This missionary. He said stay with me. I'll. I'll, I said, I'm going, brother. Tell her, go on, I'm getting out of here. He said, please stay, because he's excited of the crowds. I said, I said, I'll stay with you one night. And I said, after the night, I'm getting out of here. And uh, I stayed with him, and he paid my fee, and he paid for all my extras, my wife and I, paid for all of that. And we came back the next night, and that place had twice as many people, every demon in them islands heard that Brother Terrell was there. And they come, and I'm, I, I, I stand before God, I lie not. Some of them were hissing. Some of them were crawling like snakes on the ground. Some of them barking like dogs. And I told that missionary, I said, I'm getting out of here. I was on a hop. I let you talk me into staying one more night, knowing Brother Troll ain't here, man. And he done stirred up all these demons, and all these demons, he done prophesied and said revival is coming here, and all these demons is coming looking for him. And, and, and here you got me here with you. I said, I'm getting out of here in the morning. He said, okay. He said, wait on me. I'm going to get my bags packed. I'm going to. <laughs> so, and we left out and came back. Three or four months later, with Brother Terrell. And God brought the greatest revival to Tobacco and Trinidad they had ever had. And the greatest deliverance. And all them demons that challenged this word, all them demons, was arrested. And they was brought under subjection. That's what this light is going to do. This light is going to shine in the midst of demons. In the midst of witchcraft. In the midst of all these evil Haiti, same thing. I'll, I'll say this now. Get ready to stop. Haiti, 
We went over there and the voodoo priest. We went over there where his place was at. We was advertising about the revivals. And this voodoo priest, he had a young man, skin and bones, been fasting for 21 days for a demon to enter inside of him. And his eyes was glazed. And you could see, you could see this, 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 this thing just enter. You could see this thing inside of him. You can see it. And this this voodoo priest, he um uh, he looked like he was pregnant three times. That's right. And they would actually take something and they would make zombies out of people. They would make zombies out of them and, and make them and get slave places, colonists. And they make them slaves for them. Um, whatever they wanted them to do. And they didn't have no will. It was, it was like between life and death. It was in suspension. And they weren't in life. They weren't in death. But they was just zombies. And that's where this young man was. Like a zombie. Y'all heard about They had movers of, of all this stuff. How they put this uh, powder and stuff on people and turn them into spades, turn them into slaves. And they have these zombie places. Over there in Haiti, darkness. And we went there and that light shined right in the midst of all of this voodoo. And these priests that challenged us, God drove all this darkness away in these places we went. 80,000 people showed up and God drove that old darkness back drove that old evil back and the Holy Ghost was being poured out great revivals came and we went from there to I, I can tell you 20 different places we went Mexico, Central America South America all these different places where evil was at the light is power the light drives back Darkness, it drives back demons, it drives back all this. And this is where we're at now. Darkness has covered the earth. Demons is controlling the earth. But God said he's going to head the devil off and give revival to the earth. That light is fixing to come in the midst of darkness, in the midst of evil. He said, you never read that scripture? Where sin abound, how much more does the grace of God? Amen. The grace of God. Finish reading that scripture. We're going to stop. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Teaching Je Jesus went about all Galilee teaching. In their synagogues. In their synagogues. And preaching the and gospel. Preaching of the, the gospel of the kingdom. And healing all manner. Healing all manner. Of sickness. Every kind of sickness. Every kind of sickness that was. No sickness that he didn't heal. Uh-huh. And all manner, and of, all manner of what? Of disease. Of diseases. Among the people. Among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. That light shined throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all they, sick people. They brought to him everybody sick. And that were taken with divers diseases. That was taken with diver diseases. Torments. All sickness. All sicknesses. This light is going to cause all sickness to be driven out uh-huh and torments and torments people tormented in their mind tormented in their body tormented in their spirit people are tormented today you know by all kinds of evil spirits uh-huh and those which were possessed those which was possessed with devils with devils and those which which were lunatics those which were lunatics see the light went everywhere uh-huh and those that had the palsy those that had palsy and he healed them. And he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes. This light went everywhere, driving out darkness, driving out lunatics, driving out diseases, driving out those that was tormented. The light went everywhere. In him was life. The life was the light of man. The, it was man's deliverance. This is what I'm saying. What, not what I'm talking about, your light. Let your light shine. Let that word in you radiate. Let that word in you flow. Let that word in you bring healing. Let that word in you shine out. Let it, let it 
bring the glory of God. Let it bring miracles. Let it bring the gifts. Let it bring the power of God. In the midst of this darkness, light is fixing to spring up. And the darkness will not be able to stop it. The light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us. Lord, I know we're close. I know in the midst of all this darkness, I know a light fixing to spring up. I know deliverance is fixing to spring up. In the midst of all of this, Lord, cause your word to prevail against the darkness, against the sickness, against the demons, against the evil spirits, against the, all the evil forces that Satan has mounted against us to try to kill and steal and destroy. But you bring life and you bring it more abundantly. In the name of Jesus. Those that are here in the online, touch them. Touch their homes. Touch their families. Touch their bodies. Touch their lives. Lord, this is what we need. We don't need religion. We don't need dead, dry sermons. We need this kind of gospel. We need this kind of word to bring deliverance. We need a new sheriff to come to town. We need Jesus to rise in the midst of all of this darkness and to declare light as he did in the beginning when darkness was on the earth. Gross darkness was up on, up on the face of the earth. You spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. We need once again your spirit to hover and to bring forth light and light and healing and deliverance and the outpouring of your spirit. Jesus. Father in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Your word is spirit and life. Let it go to the places of darkness. Let it go where people are tormented, where people are sick, where people are bound. What you said, in the, you'll be a very present help in the time of trouble. Let this word go out. Let this word go from this poor pit. Let it bring deliverance. Let it bring healing. Let it bring conviction. Let it bring salvation. Let it bring an outpouring of your spirit. In the name of Jesus. We claim it. We stand on this word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all believe it? Lift your hands. Lord, I receive this. I claim this. Confirm this word. And bring miracles and deliverance and healing. Wherever this word goes, God, we claim it in the name of Jesus. Confirm this word. Save, heal, break yokes, drive devils out, drive sickness out, drive demons out, drive darkness out. Let light rise in the midst of all of this darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 